Uh, who benefits most from stoking these tensions between Iran and Israel? Uh, well, first of all, Happy New Year to you, Andrea, and uh, good to be on the show. Uh, I, I don't think there's any question that, uh, that the events that we're seeing right now in the Middle East uh, do escalate the danger uh, that uh, you know something could happen here, probably more because of miscalculation, because you've got so many of these events going on. Uh, the killing of a Hamas leader in Beirut uh, obviously raises the concerns with Hezbollah. Uh, the killing of 84 people in Iran uh, raises the issue of what uh, Iran may or may not do. Uh, there's also the presence of Iranian warships in the Red Sea and the continuing attacks on commercial ships in the Red Sea. Uh, and then add to that the continuing attacks on U.S. forces uh, in Syria and Iraq. Uh, and all of that, it just uh, raises the possibility that some kind of miscalculation will take place and you could have a dramatic escalation here uh, in, this, uh, in this war in the Middle East. There are signs that the White House and the UK and other allies may be preparing to do something, something more kinetic, because they don't think deterrence has worked so far. Uh, they put out a joint statement the day before yesterday, and it sounded very much like a, a final warning. Well, you know, I, I, I'm sure that, uh, that because there are these continuing threats, uh, particularly now with regards to uh, commercial shipping, and the economic consequences that can occur as a result of that, uh, and the fact that there are growing Houthi attacks uh, on those ships. Uh, I think it's very important for the United States and our allies to make very clear that they are going to take action, uh, if necessary, certainly to protect uh, American lives, but also to, a pre to protect our economic interests as well. And so uh, I think uh, I think both the United States and our, and our allies have to think very seriously about uh, creating some very, very clear deterrence here that would send a signal to those that would attempt to attack us uh, that uh, they're going to pay a price. How do you balance that? You've sat in these meetings. Uh, you've made these big decisions at the CIA, at the Pentagon, before that as White House Chief of Staff. So the U.S. And, and the U.K. in particular are talking about something that might involve going into Yemen with some sort of an attack against the Houthis. He had a situation where the Houthis, uh, Houthi-backed rebels and the Saudis were getting close to a ceasefire and a peace agreement. Uh, all of these other things are in play. How do you balance whether or not this would deter or further escalate uh, Iran? The last thing you want is, a, is an open war with Iran, not its proxies. Look, okay, there's no question uh, that uh, uh, there are risks involved, uh, but, uh, you know, we have a war going on right now, uh, and uh, there are a lot of attacks that are occurring. Uh, and the most important thing right now is that uh, we make very clear that, uh, that those attacks have to stop uh, and that the uh, United States and our allies will take action to make sure that those attacks do stop. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a situation where the United States and our allies have to make very clear that we will not just simply stand back uh, and take these attacks without some kind of response. Uh, is there a danger of escalation? Of course. Yeah. But at the same time, I think there's a worst message that's sent if we do nothing and basically stand back and allow these attacks to take place. So in order to send a very clear message here, I think the United States and our allies have to take very clear action to protect ourselves. Well, in fact, the commander of another Iran-backed group, this in uh, uh, Iran-backed group in Iraq was reportedly killed today in Baghdad. So that group is saying, saying, and we don't know this, that he was killed by a U.S. strike. Is the U.S. getting drawn more into these regional conflicts? There have been some U.S. casualties by some of these Iran-backed militias in Iraq and Syria. No, I, I, I understand these kinds of attacks uh, are going to take place, and the United States has to respond, particularly when U.S. forces 
uh, are the target of these attacks, and uh, we we have to we have a responsibility and a duty to make sure that we protect U.S. lives uh, in that region. Uh, look, I, I don't think anybody, Iran, uh, the United States, the Houthis, Hezbollah, uh, I don't think uh, they're interested in going into a full-scale war. They'll pay a heavy price if we go into a full-scale war. Uh, it, at the same time, uh, it is very clear that uh, as they continue to make these kinds of targeted attacks of one kind or another, that uh, the United States and our allies cannot simply stand by uh, and not take action. So it, it, is this a tense moment? Yeah, you bet it is. Uh, is there a danger of escalation in the Middle East? You bet there's a real danger, particularly now. But at the same time, we have a responsibility to send a clear message that the United States and our allies uh, are not going to simply stand by and allow these attacks to take place without a response. And, and finally, uh, a senior official said today that Secretary Blinken is heading to the region uh, today. And we're at a peak, peak moment of tension between this administration and Israel over the progress of the war and the, the civilian casualties. Uh, you've got Israeli cabinet members saying things that are being, uh, you know, broadly criticized from the podium at the State Department just yesterday, saying things about forcing Gazans out, uh, which is against U.S. and supposedly Israeli policy. You've got the prime minister talking against a two-state solution, which is already being made almost impossible just by the settlement expansion. At the same time, we have alliances with Israel against Iran. And so we have mutual interests but real tension. Um, how do they navigate that? Yeah. Well, there's no question it's a pivotal moment. Uh, and, uh, you know, at the same time, uh, I think there is uh, the real possibility here that, uh, that Israel uh, having uh, really uh, almost completed uh, the initial phase of this war uh, will very much resort to what the United States wants, which is uh, an approach of targeted attacks uh, going after the leadership uh, of Hamas. I think in the end, uh, that's what they've got to do uh, if they really are interested in trying to cripple Hamas and their ability uh, to conduct uh, attacks against Israel. So there is some hope here that you could have a transition in the war to a more targeted uh, approach by Israel. Uh, that would allow for more humanitarian aid to go into Gaza. Uh, and I think the other approach is what happens in the day after. Uh, it is critical, uh, despite some of the comments that have been made uh, from Israel, uh, it's critical to have an answer as to what we do in order to govern Gaza. Uh, and the answer to that has to be that we put together some kind of Palestinian uh, capability here to govern. Uh, that's going to take a lot of work uh, by our Arab allies, uh, as well as the United States and Israel uh, and the Palestinians to be able to develop what kind of approach can we use in Gaza that can restore some element of governing and provide security. I think that ought to be a major focus of uh, the secretary's trip to Israel.